Hey guys, Scott here, and today we're going to be looking at a new escape room prop we're calling the Lock Keeper. In essence, what the Lock Keeper is, is a keypad prop that allows you to key in up to four different codes to activate four different relays on the controller here. Now for setting up this prop, you do need a uh, monitor, keyboard, and mouse, but those are not needed in the day-to-day -day operations of the prop. We just have them here for setup. We've had a lot of people asking over the years working with escape room stuff for a keypad that will allow you to enter different codes to open different locks. Most of the keypad triggers on the markets only have one code opening one relay. So we've developed this prop to have up to four different codes that can open up to four different relays. So let's go ahead and power it up and we'll walk you through the setup and then we'll show you how the prop operates. All right, the prop is powered up, so here we have the main setting screen. You can see on the left here we have an activity log. This will tell us what's going on with the keypad after we get some of the settings put in. And over here to the right, underneath the lock keeper icon, we have the settings button. So let's go ahead and just click that. All right, and this gets us into the setting page. Uh, the first two buttons up at the top here, the first one is just for resetting the puzzle. So if you need to reset as you're going through your setup for any reason, you can click that. The next one here is for testing the relays, so we can go ahead and click that. And this allows us to, by simply clicking buttons here on the screen, test the relays here on the controller. So you see relay one here toggling on and off as I click this button. Here's relay two, three, and four. So if you need to make sure your relays are functioning properly, you can come here and just test them. You can click done. The next field is the admin password field. This is something that you can set if you want to make sure your staff has to enter a certain password before they can get in and change any of these settings. If you do set an admin password, make sure that you don't forget it. Make sure you have it written down and saved somewhere because if you don't have that, you won't be able to get back in to access these settings any longer. We're going to leave that blank. The next field here is puzzle stages. You can see one is currently selected. You'll notice that while we have one selected, over here at the right for stage configuration, we only see the first stage. We're going to set up all four stages, so we're going to change this to four, and you can see that once we've done that, we now have access to the second, third, and fourth stages of the puzzle. The way this puzzle works is it basically considers each of the codes entered into it a stage in the puzzle. And as we'll demonstrate in a little bit, you can actually set it so that codes have to be entered in a specific order, so first stage first, fourth stage last, or you can have it so that any code entered at any time unlocks the associated relays. All right, so the next uh, field we have here is the puzzle reset password. This is where we can enter any sequence of digits that we want to be used to reset the puzzle via the keypad. So we're going to enter 1111 here. So that now when this uh, puzzle is in its active mode, we'll be able to type in 1111 and it will reset the puzzle. Here we have uh, options for setting a custom key press sound. Now our current keypad does have a built-in uh, beep sound, but if you wanted to also have another sound play when people press the buttons, you can load a sound here, and we'll cover loading sounds in a little bit. Incorrect entry sound, again, we'll cover that uh, as well, but you can have a sound that uh, plays when an incorrect uh, keypad entry is uh, sensed. This field here is very important. This is called the code timeout. Right now, you'll see that it's blank. We want to make sure that we set something there because if there's nothing set there, the uh, lock keeper prop will continue to look for successful codes indefinitely. And it will never time out saying, okay, I haven't seen a code. I should go back and start looking fresh uh, for successful codes. So we usually put this at two seconds. So that seems to be a good number there. But you can adjust it by changing it to whatever you like. All right, so now we can go ahead and configure our different stages. We can click here for uh, the first stage, and you can see that for each stage, you can select a different audio file to play when a successful code is entered. We'll cover that in a little bit. And here under Passcode to Unlock Stage is where you actually enter the passcode that you want to use to be the solution for that first stage. So we're going to use 1, 2, 3, 4. We're then going to click the checkbox here next to Unlock Any Time. That means that this uh, code does not need to be entered in sequence. It doesn't have to be the first code entered. It can be entered at any time, and it will open the associated relays. And here you can actually choose which relays are activated when that correct solution is uh, detected. So we're just gonna go ahead and have it open relay one. So when uh, one, two, three, four is entered, it will activate relay one. We can go ahead and move on to the second stage. Same options here. So we had one, two, three, four for the first stage. We'll do five, six, seven, eight for stage two. We'll have unlock any time checked and this will activate relay two. Keep going down the line. So here's the third relay. We'll do 9, 10, 11, and 12 as the code. 
Again, unlock any time, we wanna make sure we check that, and this will activate Relay 3. And for the fourth, we'll have 13, 14, 15, 16. Again, we'll check unlock any time, and that will activate Relay 4. All right, so once you have all your settings uh, configured properly, you can go ahead and click Accept. It's gonna go ahead and load those settings onto the keypad, and we can actually test the function now. So if you look at the activity log here, you can see that we have a puzzle reset, all the relays are off, there are zero ordered stages and four unordered stages. So we can go ahead and enter in our codes to test and you'll see the keypad entrance will actually be typed out here on the left. If we type in a sequence that's not a solution, our timeout will read that and it will uh, notify of an invalid password and it will go back and start looking for new codes. So if we enter one, two, three, four, that's gonna open relay one. If we do five, six, seven, eight, That'll be relay two, nine, 10, 11, 12 will be relay three, and then 13, 14, 15, 16 is relay four. And if we need to reset, we do one, two, three, four, you'll see puzzle reset appears and the puzzle has been reset. Now again, because we had that unlock at any time box checked, we can enter any of our codes at any time to open the corresponding relay. So we can enter five, six, seven, eight, it will activate relay two. We can enter the last code, 13, 14, 15, 16. It'll do relay four. Then we can go to the first one, one, two, three, four, and so on. So it's not looking for any particular order. It's just looking for any of those correct codes and it will unlock the corresponding relays. All right, so let's go ahead and add some sounds to the unit. So to do that, the first thing we're gonna do is actually shut down the puzzle. So we'll go to settings here and we will go to shut down on the bottom left here and we will confirm that and we'll let the unit shut down. Once the unit's shut down, we can go ahead and remove the micro SD card from the unit. It is located here at the front. You can just pull it right out, but be careful, these cards can be somewhat fragile. So here we have the micro SD card. We can bring this over to the PC, get the audio loaded onto it, and then we'll come back and load the audio on and test the unit with audio. All right, so here we are over at the PC, uh, and we can go ahead and insert our micro SD card into the SD card reader that we have attached to the computer. Once we do that, a bunch of windows are gonna pop up. Uh, so the first thing you wanna do is, if you see this uh, warning here that you need to reformat the disk, do not format it. If you click format, it's gonna erase everything and it's going to basically kill the prop. So make sure not to click format disk, we wanna click cancel. That's all right, don't worry about what it says here, just click okay. And if you see the warning again, again, just hit cancel. We can then actually close all these windows that popped up. Now next we're going to navigate to the partition on that SD card where we store our audio files for this prop. So we're gonna open our file explorer here at the bottom. All right, so the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is navigate to the data partition of that uh, micro SD card. You can see here there are a number of different partitions. You see data H here, uh, EFI, ESP uh, here for E, and then the main OS um, G here as well as MMOSD. So all these partitions are on that micro SD card. We want we want to go to the data partition, and under the data partition, we want to look for users. We then want to go to default account, and then to music. And this folder is where we're going to copy any sounds that we want to have access to on the LockKeeper prop. So I have two sounds here, one that we want to play when an incorrect sequence is detected. So this is our buzzer sound. And a success sound, that's sort of a trumpet flare that will play when a correct uh, sequence is detected. So we can go ahead and just take these two MP3 files, copy them, and drag them into that folder. They'll copy onto the micro SD card. Now we can actually just eject the micro SD card. Just uh, right click on any of the partitions here and click eject. That will eject the micro SD card from the PC and we can take it out of the uh, card reader and bring it back over to the puzzle and load those sounds. All right, so we are back at the lock keeper here. We have our micro SD card with our sounds loaded onto it. I've attached a speaker to the uh, lock keeper here. We can go ahead and load our micro SD card back into the unit. And we can boot it up. All right, so now that we're back at our uh, main menu screen here, we can go ahead and go into our settings. And now we can go and load our sounds. So for our incorrect entry sound, we wanted that buzzer sound. All we have to do is click the browse button next to the field here. And you'll see that we can select from all the sounds that we've loaded onto the lock keeper. So we'll choose our buzzer.mp3 here and click OK. You'll see that that file updates here. And then for each of the four different stages, we can 
choose our successful sound. So this could be a different sound for each stage. So you could have a different sound play when each code is entered. We're just gonna choose our success sound for each of them. So for the first, second, third, and fourth stages, we're going to choose the success.mp3 sound, and we're going to click accept. All right, so you can see here that we have loaded audio for all those different stages. We can test that now if we enter a successful code. Our relay activated and our sound played. If we were to enter an incorrect code, after our two second timeout, you see it plays our invalid password sound and we're all set up. So let's go ahead and let's take out the monitor and the keyboard and the mouse and just show you what the prop will look like in its day-to-day -day operations. All right, so here you see the prop as you'll see it in day-to-day -day operation. Uh, no monitor, no keyboard, no mouse, just the keypad and the controller itself. We have power coming into the controller here. We have our audio output here going to our speaker and the keypad is plugged via USB into the controller here. So now we can go ahead and test the controller as you would uh, see it in an escape room. So if you know one of the codes, you can come up and just hit one of the correct codes. Corresponding relay activates, sound is played. If you were to enter an incorrect code, two second timeout, audio play is letting you know that that code is not correct. Enter in another correct code. and so on, entering any of the correct codes that we programmed in earlier to activate the relays and the sounds. Once all the codes have been activated, a tech can come in and enter the reset code. Prop resets and it's ready for the next group. All right, so that's a new look at the LockKeeper keypad prop. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at Thanks.